Hi. Okay, uh, welcome back again. I want to briefly talk about overfeeding and then um, uh, diseases of fishes. How to know when the, um, the fishes are actually having one or two disease conditions that needs urgent care. Now let's talk about overfeeding first briefly. Now, when fishes are being fed, especially during the tender uh, days of the fishes, the first first month after they are being stored, the farmer ought to be extremely careful of overfeeding them because one thing about juveniles is that they do not control their appetite. So as long as there is food available on water surface, they continue to eat and eat and eat and eat. So you get to a state that they eat beyond the capacity of their intestine and then they die. So to prevent overfeeding, usually I you, you do what we call regulated feeding during the first one month. Regulated feeding is that you are feeding them at a certain rate every day, not increasing, not decreasing. Now, it's better that they are not fed excessively, overfeeding, than uh, what is it called? Uh, having them to be underfed. Underfeeding also is not good because they will not grow at a good rate. So, f for my fish uh, farming, I had a particular uh, standard measurement of feeding. Now, for a thousand fishes, which was what I started with. I started with a thousand fishes. Now, during the first one week, I feed them with a tin of milk, uh, like um, all these our milk, a tin of milk, one cup in the morning and one cup in the evening. One cup in the morning, one cup in the evening. They will never be overfed with that quantity. So if you feed them one cup in the morning, and they will not be underfed too. So it will be very okay for them. So one cup in the morning, one cup in the evening, one cup in the So for that first one week, that is all they need. Now, by the time one proceeds to the second week, the rate of feeding, uh, I call it geometric progression. So if you feed them one cup this week, the following week, you increase it to two cups. The following week, you increase it to four cups. So one, two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on and so forth. So that's the progression in which it goes. So by the time you get to a certain stage, you start changing the feed, it won't be up to a week again. After every five days, you start changing the feed. After every five days. Later on, it becomes three days, you start changing it by adding uh, equivalent proportion geometrically. So to prevent overfeeding, all you have to do is feed them at a certain rate every day. So if you are stocking 500, which we are using as a case study, what you need is a half tin of milk in the morning and in the evening. Half tin in the morning. Afternoon. Now, it might look uh, very small and insignificant to you, but then, afternoon of milk for those small uh, juvenile is enough for them to each have at least two, two pellets per day. So they have two in the morning, they have two in the evening, so they are very good to go. So with that, you can prevent overfeeding and underfeeding. So when now comes to uh, diseases of fishes, now basically there are certain things to know. The water quality can give us an insight that fishes are prone to having disease. And when you start having uh, algae bloom on the surface of the water, there is a poor oxygen diffusion into the water, you can be sure that the fishes are prone to disease because they don't have good access to oxygen. The water also is what is bad. The number two is the water surface. Now, the water, I mean, if you look at this particular water, this is a very good water quality. For the fish because it is slightly greenish that's how it should be slightly greenish it shouldn't be too green if it's too green then it's not in good condition and it should not be brown if it's brown it's in bad condition so it should be slightly greenish as we have in this particular pond once the fish i mean the water body is slightly greenish then you are good to go you know that the water condition is okay now the disease uh symptoms of most fishes are this number one when you see irregular movement in the fishes uh, by the time they are feeding they are moving absolutely they are not moving as you ought to maybe one is just moving irregularly and you can say okay there is a problem of disease number two when you feed the fishes and the fishes don't come up to take their food at the right time they don't come up to eat then you can be sure that there is also a problem happening so one, irregular movement. Number two, they don't come up to eat uh, at the appropriate time. Number three, 
when these fishes, when after they uh, they eat and then you see that they are jumping, some is just jumping up, coming down, jumping up, you see restlessness. Anytime there is restlessness also in the pond, you see that these fishes are also not in good condition. Then number four, some of them, their color will continually change. You see white patches on the body of the fishes. So once those white patches are there, then you know that it's high time that the fishes are being treated. So there are people that are specialized in treatment of the fishes. Some could be bacterial infection, so you might end up having to use some certain classes of antibiotics that are meant for, for the fishes. Some could be viral, so there are certain drugs that also that can be used to take care of the viral infection. So, but once you notice any of these signs, regular movement, restlessness of the fishes, uh, when they don't come up to eat at the right time, then when you see different patches on the surface of the skin, especially white patches on their body, then you start considering that they are having disease. So when it is examined by the professionals, they will be able to tell you that, okay, this fish needs to be treated. It is a viral infection. It is a bacterial infection. So observation is very important in detecting fish disease. So that's why when they are being fed, spend time as a farmer to observe, to examine their feeding, their movement, and then they are good to go. Thank you very much.